Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Breaking Point Podcast UK. Today we're here with Chris Cullen. Chris is a the founder of C3 Mindset, which we're going to have a talk about today, and also the host of, is it the Betterment Podcast? That's right. Yep, the Betterment Podcast, and that's that's also a group of men, so it's a it's a big brand, but yeah, Betterment. Okay, cool. And Chris and I are going to have a chat about, well, I'm not really sure what we're going to have a chat about. We got in touch through, <laughs> so, but that's that, those are the best podcasts though, so that's fine. That's the point, right? That's the point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got in touch through Maria, who's been on the podcast right at the beginning, uh, Big Up Maria, and she was just like, uh, I've got this guy who does sort of similar stuff to what you do, would you like to speak to him? I was like, absolutely. And she mentioned stuff about like inner work. I think she said shadow work in her text on her uh, Instagram message. And I was like, damn, shadow work. That's some pretty intense stuff. So tell us, tell everyone what it is that you do and what is what you're passionate about, Chris. Yeah, thanks, Holly. I, what it is that I do, I'm I'm obsessed right now with helping people win within. And I think because I felt trapped for such a long time that like it made inner work made such a big difference for me um, in all aspects of life. So I'm very passionate about on a mindset standpoint, helping teams and helping people optimize performance. And I think that it takes a really hard look inside and it starts with the truth. And then on the on the men's inner work side, I just want to be a source of of light, a source of encouragement that like there's so much beautiful waiting on the other side of inner work. So to sum it up in, in one quick sentence, it's I'm just extremely passionate about helping others win within. And why do you think you're interested in doing that? What's your origin story? Oh, man. I think because it's made such a difference for me in my life. Um, you know, I think we all carry things from our past that affect who we are today, how we show up, how we react to things, how we speak, everything. And the origin story of that was everything for me looked really good on the outside, right? Like I remember going home at four years old and I got a note from my teacher that I gave to my dad and it said, Chris is a leader amongst his peers with an award-winning smile. And through years of therapy in my 30s, I realized that that was just a mask for me that I was still carrying. It was something that I was able to use my smile to mask every inch of pain going on inside of me. And I just hit, I hit a breaking point. It was like, there's no other way forward other than looking within and figuring out what's going on. And what do you mean you were using it as a mask? What was, what had happened? Or what was... So I was carrying a lot of, um, yeah, I was carrying a lot of pain and a lot of embarrassment and a lot of shame uh, from my childhood, which sounds weird because if you know my parents, you know that they're loving, they're great. I grew up in a beautiful home, like, but I was carrying things with me that I didn't know how to process. And so in turn, what I was doing as an adult was in every conversation, I would tilt the mic to them and I would just smile my way through and kind of have this dancing conversation, even in relationships where... I would let somebody in just a little bit, but I would make sure all attention was going their way. And so that smile for me and that that charisma piece of making sure that they felt good, that was like my mask to hiding everything going on inside. Like I didn't want I didn't want anybody to know the truth because I didn't know how to deal with it. But I knew that it was it was holding me hostage. Happiness is a tricky one. There's also another side to happiness, right? Like it doesn't, happiness isn't with you 24 seven. And so it's like, what are you feeling when you're not right in general? Yes, definitely happy. But there was things that were growing inside that I was like, yeah, it would hold you back. I think you could say from like optimal happiness or like feeling happy all the time. Right. And I think you, we have to pay attention to those. As we grow up, like you, you can see it with, with everything that you're doing. You're such a light in the world right now, but you can see this wave. And I think that men, I don't think that men are broken. I think we're just trapped because we haven't been taught. We've been told what to do our entire life, right? Our parents into our teachers 
advisors, coaches, you have all these people in your life that are just simply telling you what to do. And the more we follow that script, I think the more we appear to be happy and the more we appear to be checking the boxes that we're supposed to be. But if you're not right internally to what you just said, you'll project that or you'll you'll hide from that or you'll, you'll try and keep secrets from yourself that are uh, holding you back. Yeah. Is that, would you say that your difficulties, some of your difficulties are linked to being a man or would you say they've been sort of exaggerated possibly because of the the sort of the societal in a, although I don't think it is actually solely societal sort of inability to be vulnerable and the possibility of that being seen as weakness yeah I think that's definitely part of it I think the big piece about you know you say being a man or <clears throat> masculinity is really a hot topic right now yeah. I think the the underlying difficulty in that is we're never taught as men how to process or deal. We're like chin up, chest out, keep moving forward. Speed is your friend. Um, you know, deal with things in isolation, handle it, conform to the societal norm of what a man is supposed to look like. And when you do that, you appear to be put together and correct, but there's things inside that are, that you're bearing further that are still affecting you, right? So I don't know if it, if it's being a man more so the the masculine like societal norm is to tell you to move forward, appear this way, and do it this way. But I think masculinity as a whole can be difficult because it's hard to define. And I think right now if you look at I'll just use opposite sex relationships, right? So male to female. I think the females are asking and begging for that traditional male to be present. In yeah. my opinion, a lot of females are looking for like that leader, right? Like they want to be led. And, you know, when it's interesting when you say men are, are disenfranchised, I think that they have that calling inside of them. But you are also seeing some masculinity be vilified you know with you use Andrew Tate as a good example where it, it if that's the appearance of masculinity I think a lot of men feel like they're in trouble they don't know how to speak up that that well with that much conviction on every single topic out there right and so they can put a shell around themselves yeah. and so if a female is Again, opposite sex relationship. If a female is saying, hey, I want a leader. I want somebody who's going to speak up. I want somebody with conviction to to run this relationship or run this household. I think a lot of men right now are sitting there a little bit confused. I'm like, I don't know exactly how to do that. I've never been taught how to do that. I have this, I, I do have this pull inside of me. I'm just not sure how to like get it out, you know? And then the the woman is also hosting typically a non-traditional role as well. You're seeing more women than ever rise up in corporate America or, you know, being able to use platforms to really speak up and be a huge presence. That wasn't the case 30, 40 years ago, right? Yeah. And so there is a transformation of roles. But what I feel in the States in particular is the the woman is still asking for that leader and that strong masculine presence. Yeah, the, there's that sort of, the feminist dilemma, which is becoming more and more prevalent nowadays, is that women have, I'll say masculine drive, because it is a masculine drive to, lots of them have that masculine drive to achieve and to be successful, etc., etc. But then they also want to be, be feminine and they also want to find a man who is more masculine than they are because yes. that makes them feel more feminine and 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 the yes. problem that i think with is if you extreme i think extreme masculinity is toxic masculinity to some degree extra extreme maybe not quite but they're they're very there's a there's a strong correlation there so if a woman spends a lot of her time in a masculine frame of mind then she dismisses 
anyone or any man who is uh, less masculine than she is and that leads her leaves her with hyper masculine men and that can be very uh troublesome and detrimental that's like a theory that i have based on some of the people i've spoken to as well so yeah i completely it's agree it's a big dilemma for them absolutely and it's and it's very difficult and also the the masculine drive that you said that pull is something that's being is being vilified nowadays as you know oppressive patriarchy and etc and you know i i talk about it loads it's boring at this point but it is so true in that there is truth to both of those two terms but you know it's only half the half the story one side of the coin and but you know people don't like nuance or at least society societies don't really like nuance because it's confusing and it's not simple evidently that's enough of that topic yeah i agree with that uh, the, the the big dilemma too is you as a you know again using masculinity you want to create space for your partner to grow and shine and feel like they have your full support in that and i think that actually that is at times being seen as less masculine to be able to let or um, fully support a female call it rising like that's like that's insane to me but i think that that is going on that Mm-hmm. we want to cater and we want to like put them in the spotlight. Um, and you can feel from society that that might be less masculine. Yeah. And also, you know, if enough people talk about the same thing happening over and over again, so enough men say, well, this is happening, this is happening, enough women, and you know, whoever, even if there isn't, you know, proper evidence, anecdotal evidence with enough sort of presence behind it is pretty clear and clear and obvious that there's true evidence to it in the sense that, you know, you just said there's this kind of there's this public talk saying one thing and then there's this undercover sort of unconscious behavior seeping out in other directions and that is that is a lot that happens to all of us and that is that can be a real difficulty um i have a theory on that where like this is just generally speaking if you don't know who you are inside like if you haven't done some work on yourself all we try to do in that case is continue to cater to everything and everybody Right. Like we don't find our true voice. We don't find our true purpose and passion without looking within. So I know we mentioned in the beginning shadow work, but until you dig up some things and figure out what's going on inside, you're going to continue catering and pleasing and you're never going to feel like you're on your true path. And that's where I think a lot of men today get caught is they try to cater to everything going on, everything from Jordan Peterson to Andrew Tate and everything in between you hear these things daily, right? Social media is such a massive piece to our life. You hear all these tips and tricks and hacks and all these things daily, and you will try and cater to every single one of them um, if you don't understand what's going on inside of you, if you don't know who you are. Yeah, and and that's particularly relevant to men who are high in, who are very agreeable, high in trait, agreeableness, which is one of the... um, Big Five, which I love, the Big Five is brilliant, which is another thing Jordan B has got me into. But it is, it has got some real world value. To be fair to him, so we were talking about, you know, this. This I believe that the stereotype of women liking assholes and bad boys is because they present in a way that implies that they've integrated their shadow, as opposed to mm. the nice guy who their perception is well actually you're just pretending to be nice or it's that well if you can't not be nice then i don't want to be with you because i need someone who's capable of not being nice because as for a protective sort of protective sort of reasoning and also that there's there's an aspect of adventure there but yes that is that is very important 
to dig up what it is that needs to be dug up. How have you done that? Oh man, that, that, that's a marathon of an answer. Um, cool. you know, it starts with the truth. And I think for me, it's just recognizing some tools and some systems that can help me. So multiple years of therapy, I think I, I wore a really good mask or a, a shielding mask, if you will, through my twenties into my thirties. When I hit a breaking point, I was like, okay, how do I get better? How do I heal internally? So you start looking around one, you have to be willing to ask for help. I think that's the hardest step. And when you do, it comes to you. So I had a great therapist for multiple years. I dug into a big a big inspiration for me is Lewis Howes and Connor Beaton. Both of them provide tools and systems to to look within and find that truth. The short answer, Ali, is is asking yourself the hard questions and recognizing some of your behaviors and kind of hitting pause in that space and be like, okay, why am I doing the things that I'm doing? Let's start there. Like, who am I today? Where do I want to go? And what is the work that needs to be done? If you can ask yourself, those couple questions, I think you're on the right path. But it's, you know, I, one of the common misconceptions is that you start doing some inner work, you find a couple answers, and then you're good. You're all set. And that couldn't be further from the truth. It's, you have to be willing to start, but then there's an endurance piece to keep going and keep uncovering things. Like it doesn't, you don't get to this idealistic future and stop you know, it's constant work. So there's, there's been years of inner work and I think it's the most beautiful thing possible. Like it, you're an entire story. So why would we leave chapters and parts out of it? And the more you can write that book to its fullest extent, the happier and the more content you'll be. Therefore, you'll be less pleasing to others. You'll be less having to put on a false front to everybody or everything or the person in the mirror. It's just, you just fully understand your entire story. And I think that that's beautiful. Yeah, it is. It is beautiful. So, from what you're saying, it sounds like one of your the biggest strings that you were struggling with was people pleasing and sacrificing your own. Yeah, and and we've already touched on you possibly probably just having a slightly more agreeable temperament. Do you think 